Da -da! And like magic, we appear again. We managed to stay out of jail for another week. <laughs> I can't hear you, Linda. I muted myself, sorry, because I was just are. talking to my daughter. I almost didn't make it because she was just having trouble with the techie problem, and I actually helped her for a change. So, yay! <laughs> yay! I can do some technical stuff when I when I need to. Yeah, needs okay. must. Okay. Needs must. <laughs> so what's been happening this week, Linda? What's been going on? Too much that I can't say or else we'll get black banned from Facebook. Uh, well, you know, I just want to tell the peeps that I've, uh, I've been working really diligently to get off Facebook. When we do get off Facebook, it will be a slow transition so people get used to it. There are ways of doing it. It is expensive, mainly your own yeah. server, or but with these companies that allow you to live stream for 60 euros, 80 euros a month. And we would need uh, sponsorship for that. So I've been looking at other ways and it, it can be done. It's just at the end of the day, I get so... Uh, the brain fog of all these digits and everything that I can't do. You it. do a Linda. There you go, Mike. You do a Linda. Yeah. Okay. Which is? You know, I, sh I, I should go back to blonde hair because it suits my technical capabilities so well. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I stereotype blondes, okay? Yeah. But I feel like a blonde when I have to do anything techie techie. Yes. Yeah. So, but it's all good, you know. I sort it out because I get to you every week. Hello, you yeah. know. <laughs> for now. Oh, good. For now. <laughs> for now. Yes. For now. But you know, that's right, Linda. Yes. I had um, a lot of feedback from my channeled message, and we got something very <clears throat> uh, similar. Uh, a similar yes. connection. Magic. So would you like to tell the story well, or would you like me to tell the story? You, you fire away. Go on, Linda. You tell okay. the story. <clears throat> For those who don't know or are unaware, Mike did a channeled video of a channeled – I should just say a video – of a channeled message from his guide who is called Joan. He sent it to me and not only am I impressed by what I saw – she gave me a message regarding Mike's message. She said, this is so good that he must start doing this twice a week and to do it exactly the way that he has done it. In that format, yeah. So I hope that confirms something for you, Mike. You've got to get it out there on like YouTube, yeah. Facebook. So you can start getting these messages from Joan out there mm -hmm. because I think what I what I heard, the the way you messaged it was impeccable. The message itself was far beyond impeccable. Mm. Um, I am more than happy to share when people send me stuff that's good. So imagine mm. how much I want to share your stuff when you start doing it. Thank I you. will definitely get it out there because, you know, we've all got to stick together through this. We've all got to raise up our vibrations. Mm -hmm. And and to guys, if you haven't heard it, because it will be released because I've asked Mike off screen that he's going to send it to me to share around. But one of the messages in there, which I really want to say on behalf of Mike, so it's not just his ego saying this, so it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. There was a part in that video, video where he's talking about wars or should I say Joan was talking about wars, if we take a side and we say that we don't like somebody, we're actually creating that war within ourselves. So don't judge people. Don't accuse people. Don't take sides in anything that's going on because as soon as we take a side, we are giving that war energy. Absolutely. And that was so imperative mm. this week, Mike, mm. that I heard that message from Joan because that rang true with me and mm. yeah. groups, etc., that I'm mm. in, and it's given me 
a totally different way of now communicating with people mm -hmm. who are asking me about the war, etc. Yeah. So on behalf of me and her, yeah. I should just give her a name because you've got Joan. I should just She's she's just sitting there shaking her head like you don't need to call me nothing, Linda. <laughs> Love her anyway. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, you know, she is happy yeah. with what you're doing yeah. as well. Yeah. So there you go, Mike. Give yourself a pat and on the back the, for uh, doing this. The interesting Beautiful. thing was Beautiful. that your guide there was told that I should do this twice a week and Joan actually told me I should do this twice a week. And that confirms our, our little thing. But uh, just to uh, add something to the point, um, the, the channeled message actually said, first of all, we're taking, first of all, you're right, right, when we take sides, we create division. We're not in the frequency of resolution. We're in the frequency of division. Not only with the conflict, as you say, within ourselves. So we shouldn't take sides. What we should be doing is looking for resolution, even if that means just yep. making a donation, giving clothes, writing a letter that asks for peace rather than this, that and the other. Because the message actually said was that, you know, we in the West think we're so virtuous, but the people in the East think their governments are so virtuous. This That's is, right. This is so deep that we can't possibly know what's going on, therefore we can't make a, 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 a rational and correct decision. So it's better not mm. to make a decision. It's better not to judge. It's better just to look for resolution and, and let, the, yes. the, let the lawyers do their work, let the peace workers well, do their work. Well, and that's right. You know, we, so. at the end of the day, Mike, you've got, you can't change the outcome of anything going on. No. I personally can't change the outcome either. We haven't got that power, strength, or political alliance or allegiance. So we don't have to fuel it. No, we no. just allow it. That's allow it. And that's, you know, that yeah, message, yeah, I can't wait yeah. to get it. So please yeah, email yeah. it to me so I can share it. I mean, yes. it's, it's important you know? to know that also doing nothing, um, in effect, you're um, supporting the oppressor, whoever that is, east or west. We don't yeah. know. But by doing nothing, you support uh, an oppressor. By actually taking sides, you could be uh, supporting the oppressor. So it's best that we don't do this. It's best that we stay out of that war frequency. That's what that division is. It's a war That's frequency. Right. It's a destruction frequency. So we must yes. rise above it. And here's the thing, right? When we're on that higher frequency with that higher thought, the war frequency has to rise to meet us. But if it rises to meet us, it destroys mm -hmm. itself. So it won't rise right. to meet us, so it tries to pull us down. And if we stay high, like everything else, it ends because it's got no support. Yeah. So there you are. That's um, wow. That's uh, my thinking on this. Um, so well, then anyway. that's right. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. You know, stay neutral, guys, is what Mike's really saying here. Yeah. Don't take sides. Just stay neutral. Send and everyone light, light and love. Yeah. And... You know, the more the more that we emit higher frequencies from within ourselves, yeah. the more it's our pheromones that are emitting to other people, so they attach and create that same energetic frequency as well. And therefore, you know, the so yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's why. Yep, the outcome. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. there you go, guys. I can't wait to get this video from Mike. Yeah. He's he has sent it to me. I have seen it. Um. But I'll wait until I get, like, the official one from Mike and yeah. I'll send it out and everyone then can watch it. Yeah. If you're in my group, Dr. Linda Kramer, I'm sure Mike will add it in there or or yeah. I will. One of us will yeah. definitely because Mike's an admin. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as Hello. the show's done, I'll, I'll give you the link for it. Yeah, sure, so, darling. Yeah, so there you go. So it'll be out yeah. there. I mean, you know, so, you know I understand that people get a little bit frightened of the fact that when the channel said, you know, look, in, in this enlightened world, everyone has the right to free travel, um, you know, and people don't actually will need to own anything in the sense that there won't be any documentation to say you own this house because this is the fear energy on this 3D dimension. In the fifth dimension, 
you don't yes. need bits of paper. And I'd like to remind people it was only up until 1911 that we never needed any papers to travel, visas or anything. It's only a recent thing, this documentation, and it really is in the fear energy. Prove to me that you will not. So it's, you know, guilty until proven innocence, which is that, That's right, that low darling. frequency. Yeah. So we're heading back the other way, thank God. And those mm. people who try to enter the fifth dimension and try to steal people's property and do that, they can't live in there. They're not supported. They're frequency. And so they just won't be able to live. So... Yep. What a great world we're heading for. Of course, because ultimately I can tell you who's going to win it because, hello, she told me in 2001, you know, by 2028 this this planet is headed in the right direction for major change to occur. Um, that was virtually her quote, by the way, yeah. um, where the new energies do come into power, if you want to call it power, and new alignments are created. Yeah. So yeah. get on board, guys. Raise up your vibrations. Start being nice <laughs> in a generalized term and really start creating this harmony and peace. There's in a... peaceful times, we don't take sides, we don't judge, we don't no. accuse. No. So, we you know, do, Google just, what does... We do our bit. We do what we can. And, yes. And... When we all do what we can, we're in the love frequency and it really starts to end straight away. You know, um, you're going to get me to sing a song. Well, actually, there was a song in there, you know, um, Welcome Aboard, I think you said. Welcome Aboard, the Double Deckers. You remember the Double Deckers TV series? Did you have that there <laughs> down under? No, no, but I saw it when I lived in the UK back <laughs> in the late 70s. <laughs> Showing my age now because I'm only 36, remember? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, while we're in this uh, few. buzzy mood, <laughs> let's um, get on with the show. How's about Yay! that? So, um, That's let's right. Go, let's first of all uh, listen to what Katarina has to say. And uh, yep. everybody, just to let you know, uh, when this new sequence comes on with the music, myself and Linda do the little samba underneath it but you can't see us so hey you're not supposed to yeah we you sit here doing because i can see mike on the screen and we're doing his little dude we, we... <laughs> okay let's roll we'll see you on the other side of this news here we go <laughs> My curious, wondrous, empowered, and searching friends. It's me, Katarina Campagna, and I'm here today to bring you the open door news segment. You know, the news that makes you go, ah! Hmm. Brr. Or simply, what the? I can't believe. No, why? Why is no one else talking about this? Well, we are Art here today to talk to you about the Slender Man. Now, he might be something that's existed in our consciousness um, for much longer than in recent times with all the books and movies out on this phenomena, this creature, who knows what he is. Um, but they say that in the 1950s, a man, Harold T. Wilkins, who penned the book Saucer's Attack, upon his research came across a, a person who worked at a law firm. And they said that a man, actually two, that were very tall in height, over six feet and a half, very thin, and had bony appendages with no joints, just long rubbery digits um, came to a um, law firm and demanded all the uh, files on the cases of missing people that law firm was investigating. And of course, their imposing form, the people did get over the cases, but why were they interested in these cases? He says that maybe these slender man um, phenomena that keeps on happening all over the world, they are really men in black sightings, here hunting aliens, as they say. 
Now there's also been other sightings in the U.S. much later, of course, and as well as in England, where a man says that he is convinced a slender man of over nine feet was in his backyard as a child. You decide, is it all in our collective consciousness or are the men in black really here? A university in Japan has caused a mouse to give birth from an unfertilized egg. That's right, a virgin birth through the use of a CRISPR. Wow. What will they come up with next? Are they going to crisp us? Are we going to be cloned? Are they cloning already? What do you think? I want to know. Write in the comments below. Joan Crawford, the star of such films as Autumn Leaves and Grand Hotel, has been uh, known to have kind of a reputation for causing mischief, and it hasn't stopped her in the afterlife from doing the same. The daughter, Christina, who penned her book, Mommy Dearest in 1989 has said that most recently in her Beverly Hills home, right behind Joan's bed, there have been spontaneous fires. Um, fire department has had to come out several times to put out the blaze and they have no idea how they start. Now the house has also been exercised a number of times and still it has not helped one bit. Um, everyone that has owned the house has had everything from illnesses um, to marital problems and addictions. I don't know, is she causing all this mayhem or is that just life? They tried to make her go to rehab and she said no, no, no. And she isn't going quietly into that afterlife bliss either. She has appeared to Pete Doherty. That's right, I'm talking about Amy Winehouse. They were lovers and the singer told The Sun in 2011 that she had appeared to him at least three or four times in his London flat. And that's not all. She's also appeared to her father in Kent. Mitch Winehouse says that the songstress sits at the edge of his bed and he asks her if she is okay while he gazes upon her beautiful face. Should have thought about doing more for your daughter and seeing if she was okay while she was still alive, Mitch. That's all for this week. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've been intrigued. And I hope you remember to stay curious, my friends. <sighs> Enough dancing. Enough dancing for me. <laughs> I'll I tell you what... Um, that's an interesting story because I asked uh, Katerina to send me a photograph uh, because there she is. She was asked to take some photographs, uh, it, all sort of Amy Winehouse style for some photo shoot that, that she had to do. So, yeah. And she actually really looks quite like her in, in quite a lot of those photos. So, yeah, yeah there Beautiful. we are. Beautiful. Feeling very there radical, wasn't she, uh, today, our Katerina? <sighs> eh? She was tearing into people. <laughs> and naughty Joan Crawford, what do you make but, of this, you know? Well, I know a bit about Joan Crawford because when Mummy Dearest, the movie, came out, my whole family went and saw it, I think. We all went and saw it. Mm -hmm. Or my sister was reading it at school or something. Anyway, but we all got to know the story when I was quite young. And what that um, the actress did in the movies compared to real life, mm -hmm. you know, it, this is where words like bipolar, schiz um, schizophrenia, um, split personalities, you know, we don't know what was going through the mind of the mother, absolutely, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but one thing that we can ascertain is that Joan Crawford did like keeping up with the Joneses. Right. She was very egotistical. Right. She was, you know, she was always pretending to be better than mm. who she was. But when she was home with her kids, it was a totally different story, right. if you believe the book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, um, 
I don't, I, I don't know Joan Crawford personally. I don't know what struggles or whatever mm. she had during her life, you know, um, but the trauma inflicted on her kids, especially Christina, who penned mm. the book, mm. Mummy Dearest, I, I remember her name was Christina, and the, she had a younger son as well, so that was the young brother. But, you know, they had very extreme difficulty mm. adjusting into the real yeah, world yeah. because their mother had, you know, and we've got to remember, Mike, back in the 60s and the 50s, the grand staircases as you went to someone's house, the manicured articulated gardens, the best vehicles in the driveway with yeah. the chauffeurs and the, mm. and the car washer guys. So it wasn't just like pulling up and ordering a pizza for dinner type no, house like no. we all live in these days. Yeah. You know, it was grand. It was majestic. Yeah. It was the envy of everybody because yeah. I work in Hollywood. They were royalty, you know, the, yeah. They were extremely mm. royal, yes. So, mm. you know, that the um, Joan Crawford had to live up to that standard. Mm. You know, she she was a stunning woman. Mm. I mean, I've seen her in a few of her movies. Mm. You know, she was a stunning woman. Mm. And, you know, she really did have a lot of demons in her closet mm. that, you know, the children and the alcoholism, you know, that, you know, the alcoholism especially, it just shows that she had a lot of demons in her closet yeah. where she wasn't dealing with the stature that she had created for mm. herself. You know, it was sad, very yeah. sad story, yeah. you know. Um, was, yeah, Linda, so was she's still appearing. The, yeah. the movie Mummy Dearest, was that where she pushed the lady down the stairs in the wheelchair? Or am I thinking of someone else? Ah. Uh. Well, it was from the perspective of Christina. I remember right. that, you know, because right. it was like 20, 30 years ago or yeah. longer. Mm. I dare to say 40 years ago, 35 yeah. years ago, when I, I was a teenager. Right. But, um, you know, I do remember Joan Crawford because she was played by, um, oh, gosh, who was the actress that played Joan Crawford? I can't remember now off the top of my head. But there's a scene where she comes in, she's holding the glass and she's absolutely drunk <laughs> as a skunk and she throws the glass at the kids yeah. and she's blaming them for everything going on in her yeah. life. You know, yeah. she's getting divorced. She's, um, you know, she's, this is a woman who's scared. You know, yeah. back in the day, yeah. when you get divorced as a woman, it was yeah. the end of your life, yeah. you know. Yeah. you Unless you've got money, you don't survive. No. You know, you need that man to be the breadwinner, yeah. etc. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this was a woman who was very scared yeah. of losing everything back yeah. in the day, yeah. you know, and she yeah. just did not cope with it. Yeah. You know, she um, had a lot of um, personal Right. Inner demons, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. if she does still appear as a ghost, that would make sense. Yeah. Because she's still living in that grandeur, that yeah. royalty. Yeah. You know, she she doesn't want to give it up. And, so and clearly I, still very angry. <laughs> yeah. Burning the beds, yes. Yeah. You know, mm. that's right. Okay. You know, because, uh, you know, well, I just don't want to make assumptions. Yeah, so yeah. let's just go past yeah. that. Yeah. Um, the Slender Man, um, yeah, I've heard many stories where he's nine foot tall. Um, men in Black, though, could this be the Men in Black? What an idea that is yeah. and up for debate. Yeah. You know, could this be them coming in doo -doo 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 yeah. to see what is going on yeah. on this planet? Yeah. You know, because we... Um, you know, some of us are op um, have the opportunity to see through this veil, mm. but there's a lot of people who don't see through the veil and we don't know what's really going on in our own backyards. You know, there could be fairies flying around. There could be mermaids flying, um, mm. floating in under our boats. Yeah. You know, there could be unicorns running down our – trotting, I should say trotting because they're unicorns, trotting down our street, but we don't see them because that veil is up that's – that's um, protecting them. Yeah. So we don't know what no. this yeah. Slender Man is, but as I've said, he doesn't hurt anyone. He doesn't hit, punch, scream at, push them down, try to kill them, strangle them, yeah. or amputate limbs, that sort of stuff. So, you know, I don't, I, if I saw the Slender Man, I'd probably come up and just say, what's your story? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. You know? Mm. Well, I Ask wonder if uh, anyone's seen the movie Slender Man. I'd be interested to know what 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 they yeah. thought of it. But yeah, 
Okay. Interesting. Should we yeah. get on with our first one? This is um, absolutely. The, it was titled "Strange Wisconsin," and uh, I'm not sure who sent it. It might have been Anna, Melinda, or Tanya. It so, was. It was Anna. It was Anna. She, I, I will go there. Anna and I talk most mornings. Uh-huh. We do messenger video calls because she's in Wisconsin and I'm in Australia. You know, it's afternoon for her when it's morning for me, so yeah. it fits in well. And I said, oh, Anna, this week we've got this beautiful video of this thing from Wisconsin. She said, yeah, I sent that to Mike. <laughs> you know, she did, it's just like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I sent that to yeah, Mike. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, so it was her. Yeah, yeah, Anna, and- Anna lives in Wisconsin, so she, yeah, she's on all the Wisconsin groups and stuff. Right. Yeah, so good on her for doing and that. So- you know, she's doing an amazing job as, an ad, um, as a moderator in my group. You know, as as is you, and so is um, Melinda. So thank you so much, Melinda, for all your help in the yeah. group as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's well, go and have a look well, at it. This story, yeah. a little heads up first, is very similar to the one we saw, I think it was in India somewhere, where in the park all the, the gym stuff was just moving on its own. Now, what we're going to see is the roundabout just spinning round and round. But what you don't hear is that the woman in the car saying she has been sitting there for quite a long time and this thing has not stopped going around and you can hear there's no wind. So anyway, let, let's have a look and see what you all think and then we can discuss it. Here we go. I mean, it's a very short one, um, but as I say, um, it appears that um, when you look at the, the longer footage, the lady said she'd been there quite a long time and sufficiently, I'd imagine, for it to have stopped. And as you can hear, there isn't large gusts of wind that are keeping that thing going round and round. So, well, what do you <clears throat> the bit I like debunking these, and I'm glad that you're saying that there's no wind because we have evidence of it. Yeah. You look at the trees, you yeah. look at the grass, yeah. there's no wind. Yeah. So how the heck is that thing moving by itself so fast? And for so where long. Where it yeah. for so long, yeah. you know, um, unless it's got a lot of grease in there to just keep it going and going and going. Yeah. But um, that's a weird one. Yeah. That is a weird one. Yeah, I mean, you she, know, she I, actually... I would have gotten out. I would have, I, if I was there, I would have gotten out and ju- tried to jump on it or try to stop it to see what it was doing yeah. to replicate, yeah. you know, so you replicate it yeah. and film it again to see if it is paranormal or not. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, a lot of people don't know the tricks of the trade, yeah. you know, um, but I'm glad that she did film the grass in there. She, we can yeah. see the trees. There's no breezes. Yeah. There's, yeah. Um, there's no evidence that there's anybody around because yeah. she does do a pan. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no one like running off to say I'm here. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd go over and try and stop it. Yeah. Um, start it again to see if it did it again. Yeah. Um, to replicate it because that's yeah. one of the rules. Yeah. You know, when you're debunking, you always replicate. Yeah. To see if it's the same. Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think also, in my opinion, the amount of wind or gust required to keep that turning round, that would have been heard on the camera microphone. Yes. And there isn't right. that, you know, that sound we often hear where people are, are just walking through cemeteries and we hear this all this noise and this yeah. fluffy stuff. That That isn't there. So, look, I don't know. I would dare more to the, the, yeah. the side of this is a paranormal experience that we're seeing. Uh, at there. this point, yeah. I am too dumb. Yeah. At this point, yes. Unless I was there to debunk it, you know, yeah. and the only way to debunk this one is to physically try and stop it, yeah. push it again to the same speed, walk away and see if it stopped. Right. Yeah. That would be the way yeah. to debunk it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's all good. Well, let's see uh, what's happening here with uh, this next one. The, uh, the dead doctor who decides he still wants to stick around the, the hospital. Uh, quite interesting. Let's have a look and let's get everyone's opinion on this. The Hospital Ghost. This next clip takes place at the School Hospital Universitario in Honduras. The story goes that a doctor killed himself in the small teaching hospital many years ago and supposedly his ghost still haunts the halls. 
One dark night, a medical student who was working late began hearing strange sounds from one of the hallways. He caught this on video. It is said that the ghost can often be heard roaming the halls of the hospital late at night and sometimes flicks the lights on and off in patients' rooms. Hmm. What do you reckon? Oh. <laughs> well, what I reckon was the last five seconds where it zoomed in and slowed down. Because you see something. Yeah. Not only does he come out, right. not only does he start to go invisible, like yeah. dissipating, dissolving, whatever you want to call it, but he acknowledged the guy filming him yeah. and he waved at him. Oh, should we have another look at that? The last five seconds, Dale, just when it slowed right down, you can actually see the oh. hand come up okay. and it's, he's either... A hospital ghost. It is said that the ghost can often be heard roaming the halls of the hospital late at night and sometimes flicks the lights on and off in patients' rooms. Sometimes flicks the lights on and off. Yeah. 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 So this is a guy who's doing it deliberately, mm. you know, turning off the lights and on um, and other stuff that he does. Mm. He's doing it deliberately because right. he's intelligent. It's not residual. So, yeah, the good capture. I love it. Right. I love that. Well, yeah. I mean, Zach you know, says it looks like a, a cleaner working. I mean, he does seem to have a hood on of some sort. Yeah, yeah. As Melinda says, looks like a nurse with a hat on. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So, well, darling, hospitals don't go there. How many people have died at hospitals, okay? Yeah, yeah. It, it's only an assumption that it's the doctor, unless other people have seen him and said, yeah. oh, my God, it's the same face, same nose, yeah. same hairstyle, yeah. same height, same voice, yeah. okay? So it's only an assumption that we've got at this point. Yeah. But whoever it was was yeah. intelligent, and, yeah. and that in itself was – you know, because I've seen a lot of ghosts doing that sort of stuff yeah. um, where they just come out and then they just disappear into yeah. nothing. Yeah, um, yeah, because uh, it's part of their manifestation yeah. of how they um, come through. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen it a lot, well, so I believe that one. I love the, it. I love that. The problem is the narrator leads us to believe that it is actually the dead doctor that they're referring to. Yes. But like Melinda says, and I tend to agree, <coughs> excuse me, this is... Um, this person seems to be wearing a, a hat or a hood like the old nurses uh, used yeah. to wear. So doctor, nurse, a nurse from 200 years ago. Either way, there's a phenomena here, I think, happening. So That's the thing that we can't dispute, darling. Yeah. You know, we can't dispute it. It's somebody. We don't know who it is. But it is intelligent, yeah. the and, way that he looks at the cameraman, yes. And, and Mike Vaughn yeah. pointed this out. He was looking at the filmer in the very least. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. Interesting exactly. one. That. And I've got some, yeah. some more clips from, from that uh, uh, where I borrowed that from, shall we say, <laughs> um, for, for next week. But yes. um, super. Um, look, let's go ahead and look at the Liverpool time slip. Yes. And, and one of the reasons I, I put this in is because we are seeing more and more, uh, actually, as I think the message, the channeled message said, that time is coming together on both 
sides, you know, the past, present and future, they're beginning to blend in a little bit more now. So we're going to start seeing more and more of this uh, cross-dimensional or time slip uh, type of thing going on. Um, I know Liverpool has got some history with it, uh, like York, well, probably the most haunted city in wow. the UK. But we'll have a look. Let's have a look, see what you all think about this one. Here we go. Let's yeah. This next case comes from Liverpool, England, where there have been a number of time slip occurrences reported in recent years, more specifically in the Bold Street area. Could this area have some kind of passageway to the past, or even be a site of an interdimensional crossover? Here is just one of the stories from Liverpool's mysterious Bold Street. In 2006, a 19-year-old man by the name of Sean was running from a security guard along Bold Street after being caught shoplifting. In an attempt to give the man the slip, Sean dashed into Hanover Street and crossed over to nearby Brooks Alley. It was then that he felt a tightness in his chest and was unable to breathe. In panic and confusion, Sean turned to look back down the alley, expecting to see the security guard continue in his pursuit. When he noticed that he wasn't there, he thought that he'd successfully lost him, but it was at the same time that Sean noticed something different about his surroundings. The buildings were different, and so was the road. As young Sean crept back up the alley towards Hanover Street, he noticed that the cars driving up and down were old-fashioned. Now bewildered, he stepped out of Brooks Alley and towards Bold Street again, where roadworks he knew were there no longer existed. He checked his cell phone and saw that there was no signal. Continuing along Bold Street, he noticed a kiosk selling newspapers. He picked one up and read the date at the top. It read the 18th of May 1967. Now Sean ran along Bold Street in panic, hoping to find something he recognised. As he did so, he checked his phone again. This time there was a signal and he noticed at that moment that the world around him had suddenly changed again. He recognised the shops, the road and the people's modern clothes. He then caught a bus home. When the case came to light, many thought that Sean had made up the story in a poor attempt to escape punishment. But when the security guard was also interviewed, he stated that during their chase, the young thief had disappeared in Brooks Alley, as if into thin air. Yeah, uh, an interesting one. Linda, what are your thoughts on this, please? Well, the thoughts are that between myself and Melinda, we're giving each other heaps of kisses coming up the screen for you, Mike. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, time slips. There's a lot of different terminology for it. There's a lot of different scientific theories mm -hmm. that could prove time slips mm -hmm. exist. Then we look at movies as well on top of that mm -hmm. where they give us these slips of the truth, okay? Yeah. yeah. So do I believe in time slips? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I've experienced it a few times. And you think, what the heck was that? Mm -hmm. I actually say that anyone who has a premonition dream is having a time slipped in their subconscious yeah. mind yeah. because we're traveling into the future to see future events. Mm. Then we come back into our bed and, you know, mm. you wake up in the morning and you think, I know what's going to happen in two days because that's a time slip. I was actually calling my premonition as a child time slips. Right. That's what I was calling mm. them. As because I didn't know what premonition mm. the word was mm -hmm. back in the 60s and 70s. Well, I'll say the 70s. Um, so I believe this story, I believe yeah. it totally yeah, yeah. with other time slip stories that we've done. So let me just um, comment now on what I know from the movies. I am right up there as one of the Marvel top fans. Mm. I love the Marvel films, Captain America, Thor. Um, Captain Marvel, The Avengers, Iron Man, all those, I love them, including Aquaman as well. Okay, so there was one movie where they, The Avengers, there was a time coming of, a, of what they called a convergence. convergence. Actually, it was the Thor, Thor movie, the second Thor movie. Mm -hmm. That's the one I'm talking about. There is a convergence. And all the planetary systems align in unison. So what 
happens is when all these planets come into alignment over each other, they are eclipsing themselves. Mm. They're creating this energy where things can go from one to the next mm. and then you come back again. Mm. So <clears throat> they give us these little truths in the movies. Science proves it, that it does exist. So I am studying it, obviously. You know, I, I would love to prove where spirits go when we die. Mm. Ghosts stay on earth, mm. spirits go to heaven. Yeah. So where or when do they go mm. is the big problem mm. here. And, you know, that's why I'm trying to debunk the science behind mm. what happens to us with our consciousness mm. through our energetic field. Mm. Is it the protons or the mm. electrons, neutrons making up the atoms mm. or mm. is it something else within our makeup of our genetics or is it something else in our consciousness that doesn't activate until the point of death? I don't know, but I'm trying to debunk yeah. it past just the usual paranormal ghost investigator, oh, my gosh, I just yeah. caught a ghost on film type yeah. thing. So because I really do want to debunk yeah. this yeah. scientifically. Yeah. Um, so whenever we see videos like this of time slips, it intrigues me far more than the average person it would because yeah. I've got this interest in the science of time, mm. which leads me now that when we go to heaven, how was I up there for five years yeah. when my body was only dead for 14 yeah. minutes? Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. So there's yeah. a time slip or a time mm. distortion mm. is another scientific term that we can use in there. So it's a distortion mm. of the time frames. Yeah. Um, so it is interesting, yeah. Mike. I love it. Yeah. It does intrigue me. You know, I've had yeah. many heated, well, you know, in-depth discussions yeah. with my friends over it, you know, because me and my friends, we go deep into topics. You know, yeah. we just don't say, oh, yeah, sorry, ghost. We debunk it and really go deep with it. Yeah. So, you know, this is a yeah. topic. So when I saw that this one was on the list tonight, it just, oh, I get the goosebumps, yeah. you yeah. know, because not only do I believe that it occurs because I've had it done to me, I want to try and – come out with a scientific formulation that proves that this does actually exist past just a theory right, right. of being out there, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's it's very intriguing to me. Yeah. There you go. That's all I can I mean, say about well, it. Well, um, there was the Leonardo DiCaprio film, I think it was called Convergence, where he would go and – into another dimension, I think it is, and steal documents for his clients, uh, you know, industrial espionage, uh, industrial espionage, excuse me. And there's also uh, yeah. Cynthia Sue Larson, who's an expert in the quantum field, and she talks exactly about this time slip or uh, cross-dimensional parallel universes. Um, yes. You know, even deja vu is really um, a... A time slip. A time slip. Uh, of course, we just have to say it. It's a time slip, yeah. deja vu. Yeah. Or this is another theory. Can I just go yeah. there with deja vu? Yeah. Ooh. Because I've been in my life review and when we're there, there's no time, okay? So time doesn't exist in our life review when we're going there and we do it, right? So as a theory, because I'm not saying this is true or not, it's just my opinion of a theory that could exist amongst all the millions of other theories. Because we're there doing our memories, could it be that in this time on earth where something happens, we've already processed it in yeah. our life review and that's why it appears as a double up. Right. Because there's no time there because yeah. everything is present. So you're going through your memories. So you're standing here in this three-dimensional world on Earth and you see a black cat like in the Matrix, yeah. okay? Yeah. You see the black cat and they say, what happened? And he said, oh, I just saw a black cat and it just went past again. And, mm. they, and he said, oh, it's deja vu. Mm. No, that's a, that's a glitch in the Matrix, but yeah. that's the Matrix movie. Yeah. But when you look at deja vu, where you get this idea, oh, there's going to be a black cat, and then you see the black cat, oh, I've had this before. Could it be, because we're there where there's no time, we're remembering our memories 
So it's like a double up. That's yep. just a theory. You know, it's just a theory. Yeah. But, um, you know, there is something there with, as even as you said before, <clears throat> with regards to quantum. Because I've researched quantum. It blows my mind a bit. Mm. You know, it's a little mm. bit over my depth. Yeah, but I had to study a, it as well for my PhD. It's above you know? my grade. <laughs> That's for no, sure. Oh, yeah. darling. Yeah. You know, um, quantum physics is a whole world of itself. Yeah. But when you get into quantum distortions, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Quantum distortions is when there are these loops which are called string theory. So here we go with the Big Bang Theory, right? That TV show. Yeah. A string is created when we've got a dimension and a dimension and there's a string that attaches it. Mm. That's basically the guts of string theory, okay? But what happens when that string connecting the two does a loop mm. or it bends? Mm. Oh, I've got to just draw this, Mike, because we're talking science here now. <clears throat> so if you've got object one to object two and you've got a, a string connecting the two dimensions, mm -hmm. what happens when this, bent, this string bends, right? So instead of traveling all the way around, it goes from here to here. Right. So you're missing all that. Yeah. So that's called, um, oh, gosh, it's late for me in the night time here because we're coming up to 8 o'clock. Um, oh, what do they call that? It's in string theory when there's a bend in the string. Um, no idea. Because it's... I'll have to check with the Big Bang the Theory head, and get I, back to you. Well, I'll just go there. I've actually forgotten more information than I remember. Yeah. Does that tell you something, you know? Um, yeah, but there is something there that it's called when there's like a bend in the strings right. and it, um, it, it creates like a double up where right. you get there faster. So instead of going through your minutes right. of your day, you'll bend time yeah. through that string so you go forward three minutes yeah. and then you can come back three minutes. But why is it only three minutes? Why isn't it 300 years yeah. or 30 years like this guy just yeah. did where he went back 30 years yeah. and then he came back into this reality because of that bend in the quantum mechanics of universal time? Yeah. <gasps> there you go. There's some big words for you guys. Yeah. You know now <laughs> why I've got a PhD, right? <laughs> And you know why I haven't. So, anyway. <laughs> I like keeping it simple, Mike, because it blows too many people away when yeah. I do start talking the big words. Yeah. So I like keeping it in layman's terms yeah. and telling people things that they can understand, yeah. you know. Um, you know, so I do try to always talk on layman's yeah. terms yeah. without getting too techy-techy with yeah. my yeah. Um, um, technical vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it is interesting. I love that story. And, that of course, great. I've no doubt in my mind that CERN – have a little bit uh, to have uh, contributed to this um, scenario. But if you are interested <coughs> in this, just do a Google search on Cynthia Sue Larson. She is, yeah. you know, a brainiac to the highest level and makes things so easy for everyone to understand about the quantum field and how you can nip into the future to see yourself and come back and... <laughs> Decide and if this is where you want to go. But this is where this is where we also go into the looking glass. Yeah, yeah. For those who don't know what the looking glass is, um, apparently the governments have acquired it, and it's UFO technology. And when you look into this device, which they call the looking glass, it shows the outcome of future events. Yeah. So and the past isn't, it? isn't this the, chroma, the chroma, chromograph or something? That the yeah, Vatican something, has, yeah, it's got some, has, has hidden, yeah. Yeah, so it's called the looking glass. Mm. So, yeah, look up the looking glass um, and you'll find it there, especially if you go over to DuckDuckGo. Right. Um, you know, don't stay on Google. Go over to DuckDuckGo and you'll find it on there because I have, you know, because that's an interesting concept as well. If it exists, do, 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 do. <laughs> there you go. So what are we going to watch next, darling? Are we going over to... Well, we're going to have a listen Rome? at this um, no. divine intervention of Bridget Nielsen because yes. she um, 
actually describes her angelic intervention being witnessed by people in a different way in which she talks about uh, a time slip or uh, interdimensional uh, reality. So let's uh, yes. go over and um, see what she has to say, and then we can obviously mm -hmm. all, all comment. Here we go. And we were hiking with my family to this place called Elephant Rock, and we were with my aunt and some of my cousins. And we hiked all the time since I was like really young, so hiking was a normal thing. We hiked up to Elephant Rock, this place on this normal trail, and it took quite a while. And there was no one on the trail, no one in the parking lot. I just remembered no one was around. And my dad and uncle being highly outdoorsy are like, well, let's just take this shortcut down the cliff face with the children so that we can get back. Cause this was like a pretty long hike. Shortcuts are never a good idea, right? We, we, we know that. It's already like sets the stage of like the vibe, right? So we start cutting down trail, off trail, uh, pretty much pretty steep grade, like, you know, sh loose rocks and rubble, holding onto branches and trees as we're going down. The moms and dads are like, clean, you know, kind of holding on to the kids as we're going down. Not a safe or smart situation. I'm at the front of the pack and making my way down and above is my aunt and she knocks loose a boulder. Okay, let me set this up because pay attention to this because there's gonna be a lot of different iterations of actually what happened based on different perspectives. So I'm like, like maybe 50 to 100 feet away from my aunt. I'm the first to the bottom of the hill. I get to the bottom and I go and I sit on a rock. This is my memory. I go and sit on a rock. And I, this is like very vividly clear too. I go sit on the rock. My aunt is above me. She's the next. And my dad is right behind her. She kicks loose a boulder. And this is a giant boulder, like a really legitimate boulder. And it starts rolling down and I'm sitting on the rock. And I'm sitting there and what I remember is I'm sitting there and I just see this boulder coming towards me and kind of like my life is, I'm dead. Like I'm dead. There's no adults that can save me. We're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no one around. And this guy, guy out of nowhere grabs me, picks me up and sets me down. Now I actually like got like a, the, the boulder hit my ear and I actually got like a cut like on my, my ear, sits me down. Now the story from my dad's perspective, he's above watching the whole situation and he cries a blood curdling scream like Bridget, like get out of the way. But I was young and I, my response time was low and I you know didn't know what was happening, it was just happening. And he sees a guy come out of the bushes and push the boulder. Okay, this like, if you, any of you know any physics, like this is impossible. Like this giant, really heavy boulder, there's no way that he could have timed that to like actually midair, like push it out of the way and then save me, right? That, that's just like, it was impossible. And like my dad saw back on it like millions of times and he's like, it, it was impossible that that could have happened, but that's what he saw. My aunt, the third witness, saw some version of that same thing where he like actually like kicked it or pushed this boulder out of the way, which again is impossible. So by the time they got to the bottom of the hill, this guy was gone and that was it. And my dad, like when he saw me, he knew that I was dead. Like he, he just, he knew, like he saw that and my aunt as well. So now we have multiple versions of what happened in this death situation. So in one reality, I died. Okay, like done, gonzo, Bridget knocked out, like head rolling, I don't know, like something bad, right? Gone, and that, that was the reality that my dad like perceived, like we felt that that happened, and I also felt that that happened. So there's a lot of cutting, and snipping and cutting, literally like a video clip, and in this cutting, things aren't perfectly clean. Um, and that's why there's different scenarios of actually what happened. So it was kind of like in this few second moment, they had to do this thing and it was like, okay, well to, to Kirk, my dad, 
the, the guy pushed the boulder. Same to my aunt. But then to me, I remember getting physically picked up and set somewhere else. So we had two different versions because there were two different timelines and they were, they, the kind of higher ups in our soul were trying to come up with a situation and a scenario that would be believable. And yet it wasn't. And so that's another part of the nature of these kinds of experiences, which is so beautiful and profound, is that it's, it's unexplainable. And, and at that time, um, we had very like a scientific kind of perspective growing up. It wasn't necessarily a spiritual perspective. And all of us, by the time we got down, everyone got to the bottom of the hill, straight up was like, that was an angel. Like that was your guardian angel. And he disappeared. He was gone. Like if a normal guy like did that, he would be like, okay, are you okay? Wait for the dad to come down. Okay. Is everything all right? You know, and like out of the, out of the bushes in the middle of nowhere, there was nothing that made sense around this. And so it was one of the first most impactful experiences, spiritual experiences that I had and my dad had and everyone around to be like, whoa, that was something different. Like that was a miracle. Hmm. Yeah. Three different versions. Three different versions. This, I must be honest, yeah. is the first time I've actually heard something like that. I've I've heard people obviously um, tell uh, their accounts, and they vary slightly. And you could say they're all in the same time frame and all within the same experience. But I've never actually heard an experience where people have had three different accounts of the same scenario quite interesting that's right yeah but ultimately we we could disprove the other witnesses mm. because it's shock of what happened yeah okay but there's similarities who's the man yeah because they all saw him yeah they he was there for all of them so where did he go where was he before the incident did he cause the incident? No, because that lady said that she yeah. knocked down the rubble. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is all going outside of that box of asking the questions of how this unfolded, yeah. you know, because, yeah. you know, you see something very quick that's unexpected. Your brain does create things. So I'm not saying that they're lying or they've made things up. No. But, you know, we don't know the version, so we have to trust the versions of what yeah. they've said. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately... There is the possibility where things overlap each other, yeah. okay? Yeah. We've seen it in our videos mm -hmm. where a car will collide with another car yeah. and the car goes through the other car and they don't collide. No. How does that happen? Yeah. You know, we've had that on our one of our shows with the car. Yeah. Um, you know, so... You know, there, there is the possibility of two objects or should I say two different, um, oh, gosh, I'm going to go scientific again, guys. I don't want, hope I don't lose yours. But <clears throat> objects are made of atoms, right? We all know this one. Everything's made of atoms, right? So when you go on to that, um, like, nuclear stage of minuscule, minuscule, tiny, tiny little particles, there is a possibility of these both inhabiting the same space mm. at the same time, mm. okay? So, yeah, it's one of the theories that's in my book, Ghosts and Spirits, by the way, where I talk about that. So that's something I've already written about, mm. where two objects can both occupy the same space, mm. okay? Space is not what's out there. No. Space is every particle in yeah. our existence that yeah. makes up our three yeah. Dimensional plane, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I believe her story fully. Yeah, you know because I've studied it, I've mm. seen it, I've heard other stories over the years. Um, so her memory of sitting on the rock compared to the dad's perspective. Yeah. Um, you know that also rang true about our life review, mm. where we have to occupy the body of one, and then mm. we go in and occupy the yeah. body of the other person, and we see the mm. sides and the perspectives, mm. right? So that could create the two different timelines yeah, here as yeah, well. Um, yeah. So amazing that it does happen, you know, because as you said earlier, I thoroughly believe that we are going into a stage, whether it's from the photon belt, hello, still science, <clears throat> those who don't know, research the photon belt, P-H-O-T-O-N yeah. belt. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Mayan spoke about it. You know, mm-hmm. ironically, the Mayan calendar expired in 2012. And that's when Earth started entering the yeah. photon belt. Yeah. And the deeper that we get into it, because we go through it for about yeah. 20 or 40, 50 years, yeah. the further we get into it, this veil yeah. is separating. So paranormal things, yeah. intu- intuitiveness or intuition, psychic abilities, it's all now coming out. Yeah. Um, and you wonder why they had to start isolating us. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, before oh. we um, move, I'll just give you my my theory on this. Is that? Yeah. Um, my understanding is that this space that say I'm sharing in this room here is shared by many many different dimensions. So oh, there, yeah. there could be dinosaurs walking around here. There could be Neanderthal men walking around <clears> here could be anything um it's just what it is to me it's like this if we have a radio and i'm on 95.8 which is capital gold i hear capital gold but then if i tune it to 105.5 i've got classic fm and i hear classical music but capital gold hasn't gone anywhere it's still here it's just not on that same frequency that I can hear it anymore. And when exactly. sometimes you tune that, because I still like to tune radios rather than push a button, you tune that radio, yep. you get a combination of two, then the two frequencies uh, begin to intermingle I've, with each other. i got to do it, Mike. I don't applaud you too often. <laughs> i got to do it, darling. Yeah. You just got the – that was the best analogy of how to explain this, the radio stations. That first channel hasn't gone anywhere, no. you know, um, and that's the best way to explain it. Yeah. So, yes, it can happen, yeah. absolutely. You know, it's only because we have time on this planet, yeah. but when you go outside of these dimensions, you know, someone said to me one day, how many portals or vortexes are there? Yeah. And I said, darling, you'd be surprised they're everywhere. My house here has got about six that I'm aware of. You know, outside in my front yard, there's one. and There's a couple in my backyard. I drive down the street and I drive through them because I can feel the energy when I go through these um, vortexes, stargates, uh, whatever you want to call these interdimensional gateways, right? I feel it when I go through them. Mm-hmm. Um, I get sometimes I get bad feelings. Sometimes I get oh that was yeah. a cool one, yeah. Yeah. Um, because some some of them are yeah. negative and um, yeah. positive charged. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know this may explain yeah. Linda why I will often walk down the road and just decide to cross over. I just don't like the energy that's in front. That's and exactly I prefer this right. Other side, you know. Yes. And so I would yes. say to people, really, just trust what you're feeling. Get back in touch, feeling your body yeah. again. Um, and you'll find yeah. you'll start doing some crazy things. People don't care. I, I mean, I remember um, when people first had headphones with their phones and they're walking down the street, and I'm thinking, is this nut job talking to himself here? I soon realised <laughs> that they've they've got this microphone here. Um, so, you know... I got one. <laughs> yeah, nobody bothers anymore. So just get back in touch with your body and, and feel what your body's telling you, and I think you'll find some interesting... Uh, Results. Yeah. Hey, so. just just to stay on a conspiracy side here, guys. Just so you know, did you notice, Mike? Mike, hold up your cords for your earpieces. Do what? Just pull them out. Yeah, oh. hold it up so yeah. we can. No, no, no. Just hold it up. See how I've got one too, guys. Yeah. If you're going to buy earphones, mm-hmm. buy the ones with the cords. Don't yeah. buy the ones that are Wi-Fi. Because only one of your headsets work and it sends a radio frequency yeah. through your head yeah. to reach the other side to give you hearing in both ears. Yeah. Okay? Um, you know, we've all heard words like brain clots, brain tumours. I've had a brain tumour. Hello. Maybe I'll do a video on that one one day. Um, but, <laughs> God, I've had an eventful life. Um, but... Please know, guys, Mike and I, we both use the cord ones. One goes into one ear, the other side goes into my other ear for a reason Mm -hmm. because we're protecting ourselves when we do our shows, okay? So if you ever see those Wi-Fi earplugs or whatever they call them, ear Mm -hmm. whatevers, I don't know, they're like ear pods, I think they're called, ear pods, 
just be aware that it is sending radio frequency through your head to the other headset because only one of them works, not both of them, okay? Um, yeah, protect yourselves. That's all I'm saying because yeah. I just reminded me when I saw yeah. you just playing with your cords, duh. And it would it's be, good. Uh, it'd okay. be good advice also. <clears throat> uh, I often forget, but I've got to train myself now, is to turn the router off when I go out or go to bed. And, yes. Um, well, and again, what my, I'll do is... My router is at the end of the house there. I sleep at this end of the house here. You know, unless you've got an EMF reader, you know, who, who carries one of them around? I do. <laughs> I've got a few of them. But, yeah, you know, get yourself an EMF reader if you know someone that's got one yeah. and really do test out your microwave because yeah. your microwave, you shouldn't be three feet from your microwave when it's on. Don't have You one. shouldn't be... Oh, darling, well, yeah, it's called a microwave for a reason because yeah. it's nuclear, yeah. right? You know, nuke your food. Um, stay three foot away from that when it's turned on. Um, all your routers, your electricity yeah. box yeah. on the outside of your house, etc. Yeah. Yeah. you shouldn't be within yeah. six feet of those boxes. Yeah. So please, if you do have one, change your bedroom if that's where you yeah. sleep, okay? Because yeah. uh, we all just, you know, Mike and I, we are so vehemently trying to protect everybody here and look after your own yeah. wellness and health, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good, so good. where are we going to next? Are we going uh, over to Ron Barks? Ron Barks, yeah, the NDE of uh, yep. Ron Barks again. And I just amazed at how many different NDE stories there are. You know, traditional religion would su suggest that you die, you go to heaven, and we all sit there doing the same thing. But boy, <laughs> you know, these NDEs are all different, and uh, I, I think they're really. Amazing. I, I often wonder what's in store for me when it's my turn. So <laughs> anyway, let's have a listen and uh, we, we'll take some comments. We're living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I had gone skiing with my daughter at the Santa Fe Ski Basin. So we had a couple of runs and around 2.30, uh, we got on the ski lift and part way up after about, I'd say no more than 30 seconds or so on the lift, I suddenly am hit with intense pains in both arms. And Janine turns to me and she says, Dad, you're being rude. You're not paying any attention to me and I'm talking to you. And I turn and I said, Janine, I'm having a heart attack. They managed to carry, get me down underneath the attendant shed. The owners of the, of the ski basin under all of those shacks at the top of their chairlifts had built, essentially, you might think of it almost as a little clinic, a treatment center. You know, and it turned out that the doctor who headed the emergency unit at St. Vincent's uh, was on the chairlift because it was a Wednesday and he was training the ski patrol members in med medical things that afternoon. So I, in essence, came under a doctor's uh, care within minutes of this having occurred. While I was down there, couldn't see anything, couldn't talk, but I was listening. Eventually, they had to bring me down from the top of the mountain in a sled. So we get down to the lodge, a lot of tension down there at the time. Where's the, where is the ambulance? Where is the ambulance? When is it going to be here, you know? Doctors there. Janine, my daughter, was with me. God bless her. Because every once in a while, Janine would come over and she would pat me. She would touch me. She would, and I could feel her tears on my face. And one time she leaned over me and in tears and she said to me, you can't die, you tough old buzzard. You've got to be the grandfather to the children I haven't had yet. But that statement that she said was like tossing me a life preserver because I was able to cling to that. It gave me a reason for being, a reason for staying. I, and I said, Lord, I place myself in your loving hands, but I will be done. Instantly, I was no longer in the ambulance. What happened in the ambulance is I flatlined. And for two minutes, they tried to bring me back and couldn't. And as a consequence, he told me they gave up. He said, a minute and 35 seconds later, you came back on your own. I was still in my corporal body, but I felt, it seemed that it was like being on a, the edge of a cloud. If any of you have ever been in a plane at high altitude on the edge of a cloud at sunrise, where you have seen the, it, it, with a blue sky and a clear day and the sun just starting to peek over the horizon, you might have seen the filaments of the cloud tinged with gold fluttering gently in the air, and above me was a blue sky, but I was surrounded by a bright light. Not only surrounded, I was immersed in that bright light, and it was passing through me. 
And I, I could see I was incandescent like a light bulb. And I went, wow, you know, this is something. And immediately this incredible sense of forgiveness, that was the strongest. And it was almost simultaneously with realizing I had the light. And with that, an incredible sense of love and a joy you cannot imagine. They call it peace beyond all understanding. I think it should really be more accurately called the joy of forgiveness beyond all understanding. But at the same time, I was also still in extreme pain. And I mean extreme pain. Then I'm thinking to myself, my gosh, I'm on my way. And I, but I say, God, I don't want to be on my way. I want to be going back, you know. I don't want to die. I've got too much to do, too many things to do with family and what have you. Please, please, let me go back. But with that, these filaments to my left, these beautiful gold-tinged filaments of seeming cloud are brushing my left arm and shoulder. I'm just laying on my back on this flat. And where it touched me, the pain was taken away. And oh, what a blessing that was, you know. And it, as it slowly kept coming and just brushing my body so gently, and the pain was slowly along my arm disappearing, you know, on the one hand, it was a great relief in a sense that you wanted to allow it to come over me. And then I suddenly realized that with that, that was death. I didn't want that. I was afraid of that. And so I prayed all the harder, God, help me, deliver me. Let me come back. All of a sudden to my right, somewhere within a foot of my right hand, which is again, laying right along my body, appears what I call my love robe. And my love robe is a red velour bathrobe, but we only the four of us were aware that I even had it. But there it is, folded neatly. I can see that I love you, dad. I love you, Jim. I love you, Jen. All I had to do was pick up my hand and reach, take it. I was so weak, so worn out that I didn't have the strength to do it. I couldn't do it. And I thought, I'm going to die. And then I thought, no, I'm not. And calling upon every ounce of willpower and physical strength, I didn't even know I had. I managed to pick my right hand up, move it over onto that love robe, drop my hand on it and said, I want this. The, the, this was the love in the family, etc., that I was praying and begging to go back to. With that, I grasped it. I pulled it onto my chest. I said, I want this. Immediately, I lost consciousness completely. After all of this, I regained consciousness, and I'm in the ICU down at St. Vincent's Hospital. And everybody was so happy. Thanks for watching today's video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So I'm having a little giggle to myself here, Linda, because, you know, we should really, really be careful what we ask for because he, he asked for, okay, thy will be done. So God says, okay, I'm bringing you home. Wait, I don't want to die. I want to go back. Uh, and, you know, so it's the contradiction. It's basically, thy will be done as long as it's what I want. You, you know, it's, 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 so be careful what you pray for, is, is what I would say. I, I just love the last three lines, <laughs> um, the three last words before it finished. They were all happy. <laughs> I woke up and they were all happy. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. You know, I love hearing different versions of NDEs. Yeah. You know, I've got a theory with regards to his robe. Go on then. Because it's that connection. Is it's it that the conscious Christ connection. Robe? No. It's it's what he's connected to. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like me with this nighty. I'll tell everybody this is my nighty, guys, that I'm wearing. Well, I don't wear it as a nighty. I wear it as like a. Um, a little mini dress because it gets so hot here in Queensland. You know, right now it's quarter past eight and it's 26 Celsius, you know. Um, so I love this red dress. You know, I call it a dress. And plus I love the words on it. I'll just quickly show you. I'm the gift that give, keeps on giving, okay. That's what it says. I'm the gift that keeps on giving because it is a, um, a Christmas nighty. 
So I love it because it just inspires me to be loving and giving all the time. So he's got this connection to this robe because he wore it. It was his favorite. He knew it really well. He's got this connection to that robe. So that's the energetic connection Mm. that I talk about with what brought him realization in that perspective of his experience. Okay. You know, if if it was his favorite cat that may have appeared to him, Mm. you know, or it could have been his favorite car that appears to us in our perspective of what we create through that conscious connection. Okay. Yeah. So Mm. of course that's why he created that robe, you know, because it was his consciousness connecting him back. You know, you think of the movies, because I love the movies, Wizard of Oz. Mm. Dorothy goes to the land of Oz, she's there for most of the movie, and then right at the end she's standing before Glenda, the Good Mm. Witch of the North, who a lot Mm. of people call me because my name's Linda and I love her. I love the pink dress she wears, but that's a side story. Are you a good witch as well, Linda? Oh, I try to be, darling, all the time. (laughs) What stays on tour, what happens on tour stays on tour, unfortunately. Um, We won't go there. But at the end of the day, um, Dorothy's standing in front of the wizard and or in front of Dorothy. Um, She's standing in front of the good witch, Glenda, and Glenda says, you've always had the capacity to go home. All you had to do was think about it. Yeah. Because what we think we create yeah. it's our perspective yeah. through our intention yeah. of our thoughts so she you know in the mm. wizard of odd movie dorothy started thinking mm. about her house she started thinking about her auntie may or whoever thought mm. what her name was and toto mm. and she went back there yeah. so that's what this guy was doing he was remembering his clothes that he wore that yeah. favorite robe yeah. so of course that connection it's like opening that doorway of the time slip or whatever we yeah. want to call it yeah. through the vortex or portals or whatever mm. you want to call it mm-hmm. where he then could travel if there is a traveling involved because as you said before are we in a different place yeah. or a different space yeah. at this time yeah okay mm. so that's what's brought him back yeah, yeah. love it that was a really lovely story i'm uh, glad that um you got that one and of course yeah don't start me off on what the real story of the Wizard of Oz is because we're running out of time and uh, we're, we're perhaps well, going to that. We'd be we'd be talking for about an hour there, Mike, yeah. because I know a lot that yeah. you know too. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, I'd be backing your story yeah. up, yeah. yes. I mean, <laughs> j- just before we, we go on to this last story, um, I'm sure a lot of people listening uh, will be aware of it, but just in case... Almost everything you see in the movies now is predictive programming. They tell you something one year, two year, three, four, five, sometimes ten years before an event takes place, and they do. Can it I in just several can films. I just butt in? Yeah. Can I just butt in before you keep going? Sorry. Funny thing, the other night I watched Independence Day with Will Smith. All right. Wow, yeah. are there some drops in that yeah. movie? Yeah. You got to listen for them, guys, because yeah. they say three or four sentences, and it's the one in the middle, so they want you to miss it. Yeah. But there are some big drops in Independence Day. Yeah. Now that what we've been through in the last decade since mm. that movie was yeah. that came out in like '96, I yeah. think. Um, yeah, go watch Independence Day yeah. if you want some truth bombs. Yeah, they throw it in there as predictive. Yeah. Um, so keep going, Mike. Yeah. They do. They yeah. really do. Okay, as we're moving. You've lost, your, you've lost your train of thoughts now, sorry, because okay. I cut you off there. No, no, that, that's all right. It, it was uh, just to say that um, the Wizard of Oz uh, on the surface has got this, you know, fantasy story, but it's actually uh, something quite deep, quite profound. Um, and, yeah, once you get to know what the hell's going on, you know, everything becomes clear. Uh and uh, and I think that again, just to go back to that channeled message, this is what she was talking about. If you find your own first inversion or on your own back, if you find something that's inverted uh, without reading about it or anything else, once you find one, you will see a lot of inversions, and you will be able to no longer put that energy into it. So. Um, and of course, this applies to me. Once you start seeing a film, you can no longer look at the damn film 
as just a bit of entertainment. You're going, what the, what the, you know, what's going on with this film? Yeah. What, what, you know, it's so clear in a lot of things. You know, in the Batman movie, they throw the the walkie-talkie down on a map where you see uh, um, whatever that damn place is where the school shooting was that time, the big one. I can't think of the name of it now. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, you know. It's just there, and and then you get in. Why have they done that? And you you go down this massive rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. Um, so everything, you know, it's not just entertainment anymore. It, it is absolutely used to manipulate and direct. So just just be careful about yes. that, uh, people. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they, it's how they create their red flags. Oh, yeah. they're false flags, I should say. Yeah. Research what are wrong, what are false flag. Mm. Um, also, look at crisis actors. You know, we've had crisis actors on our TV here. Um, I'll tell you our one that we had. This lovely girl was in hospital with COVID. Um, she's sitting there with her hair done. She's got makeup on. She's got the oxygen. You know the little oxygen tube yeah, that goes yeah. into the, the nose? Yeah, the canola She's tube, lying yeah. in... Yeah, she's in hospital, all dolled up. She's saying, oh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I've got COVID, um, oh, oh, I've got to go and get jabbed, blah, 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 blah. Comes out that she's an actress. So all these people are sharing her profile from her yeah. um, actress, mm. actor's mm. agency, and then it comes out that she'd applied for the job to be on TV. So not only did I share dun, dun, her profile, yeah. but... We've also now got, because she's a crisis actor, yeah. have a research of those because oh, I've got so many photos. Um, if you just want them, I can send them to you. Um, people that were at Sandy Hook miraculously are now lawyers defending somebody else that where there was another bombing. So how can you be a family member who's just lost your daughter? Oh, the best one was the, um, the school teacher at Sandy Hook. Oh, yeah. She was killed, the teacher that was killed. Turned up four at years Boston, later, wasn't it? Yeah. she was at Boston Marathon. She yeah. got injured four yeah. years later. Same yeah. woman, same yeah. name. How yeah. does that work? Yeah. How does that work? And yeah. then you find out Sandy Hook was actually shut down a year before the shooting because it was full of asbestos. How does that work? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Time to wake up. You know, but people are slowly getting there, Mike. Slowly, you know, so maybe slowly, we just... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just gave someone a little yeah. drop tonight where they go and look at crisis actors. Um, a look stop. at images. Mm. There's heaps There's heaps of images yeah. there where yeah. you'll see the same person in different scenes, mm. you know. It's very, very sad what the government is doing. For those with the wow. eyes to see. Lee Van Leeuw. Lee Van yep. Leeuw. Uh, our final yes. sequence, uh, South African medium. Um, yeah, let's wrap it up, see, see what she has to say. Yep. He's also taking me to his side over here and I feel as if there would be a scar on his side and I'm getting a sense of a small little scar so there would have been laparoscopic surgery over there for something like a gallbladder operation. Yes. Would you understand that? Yes. All right. I feel like I want to talk to him. He's talking to me a little bit over here as far as jobs are concerned and he's giving me a sense of in the beginning of my lifetime I couldn't really settle on a particular career, so I feel there would have been a few job changes as he went along. But then he seemed to settle and he's making me feel in his latter years over there, he went on pension and he was taken care yes. of quite nicely. Yeah. I do feel like he wants to talk a little bit about um, someone close to you and I feel like he's acknowledging that there is a change in a career or um, I'm getting a sense of maybe a change in a new career or there's a recognition, so we're changing to a new position in the company because I'm, I'm, he's showing me the symbology of a desk over here and he's bringing another desk, he's animating it for me so he's picking up this person, I feel it's a gentleman who would be in the physical and he's going and he's sitting at another desk over there. Would you understand someone who's going through a job transition right now? Not, not, it doesn't come Okay, I want to go to a little bit younger so I feel that this would be someone who might be around in their 30s so maybe this okay. is something that you could find out for me over yes. here because he says he's very very proud of that and i'd like oh, to leave I, you know what i know who this is you no. do yes I and do. i'd like I'm to sorry, just yeah. leave his love with you over yeah. there and a lot of support over there and also if you could pass that message along that he's very very proud I like very very know. proud mm -hmm. thank you for working with me
you know, there's some evidence there, and uh, yeah, I think she's done done yeah. a good job. Myself, but absolutely, yeah, yeah, super, yeah. One of the lines, you know, it's funny how we've all got a line. Okay, I'll I'll explain what the lines are. I'm sure you do it too, Mike. Okay, because you're medium. Um, when we get information, guys, about let's just say I've got Mike's grandmother here. She's popped in, and she'll tell me something. So I repeat that to the information to Mike. And the line that I say is, does that make sense to you? Yeah. I, I, it just follows. Um, it's like the line, you know, the pickup yeah, yeah. line yeah, yeah. that I say when, you know, I'll say, oh, yeah, I've got your mum here. She's holding a fruit of um, a bowl of fruit. Um, she's telling me that it's oranges. Is, does that make sense for you? So, yeah, that's my line. Does that make sense for you? Yeah, yeah. So she's got that line as well, yeah. you know, um, where we try and just get that clarification. Yeah. Have, oh, am I on the right path with this, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can tell that she's doing a good job with what she's doing, yeah. you know? Yeah, I love yeah. it when we show I mean, our mediums at the end. We, we were taught uh, to say uh, once you give some information, can you understand this or can you take this? Yes. Um, and, and also, you know, it's becoming more so the case now where they encourage people to not say no if they don't understand it, but to say, I'll hold that. And it's nothing to do with, you know, being wrong, because this isn't, uh, um, you, you know, um, a, a science where everything is known. You know, there's the, so yeah. many unknown quantities. And since we're dealing with energy, no is of a very blocked, low energy, as it were, and that yes. can throw the link off. So if we say, I'll hold on to that, we, we understand that the information isn't correct that yeah. we give. And it, it just keeps that frequency where it needs to be. But no is very yeah. bomb. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the it's a it's a um, closed, closed, um, what do they call it? Closed. Um, um, like a statement, yeah, yeah. you know, um, open, op closed. Um, it's not an open ended. No, you know, it's it's a closed ended. Yeah. So it's definitive. It, it stopped. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I I like just saying, does that make sense for you? Or yeah. um, you know, just so. Oh, okay. Then it may may make sense for you later yeah. after we've done our reading and you confirm it with someone else. So that's still opening that yeah. channel there yeah. of the energy flow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and Tanya just, wow. just commented that often the info makes sense later. Yes, and that that is true. Yes, um, that's right. You know, that's why I say to people, you know, um, when I do readings, I always say, well, you're welcome, welcome to record it yeah. because I'll just come out with something and it's only when you go back and you read, you listen to it, you think, oh, my God, I didn't realise that she said that. Yeah. You know, classic line would be, oh, I can see that you're – Daughter's having a baby. When do you yeah. think he's going to be born? Yeah. See how it just flowed? Yeah. When do you think he's going to be born? Hang on. She just said he. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. When do you think he's going to be born? So it's going to be a boy, okay? Because, you know, we we get that knowing of information as well, but you just, because of the way that it just comes out, so yeah. it is wise to, you know, record what I say when I do my readings. Yeah, yeah. so I always say, yeah, record me. I don't mind. Yeah. You yeah. know, go back to it and, and clarify, you know, ring somebody to verify it if it was yeah. true or not, yeah. you know, so it's not closed like we were talking I mean, about. One, yeah. of the, one of the things I ask people to do when they, if they want an evidential mediumship reading is to say to them, look, go back through all your photographs Look at all the people that you've got memories with, friends and family, uh, maybe school books for teachers, for classmates, and, and all of that. And have a look at some dates as well. You know, oh, yeah, look, I've got a memorial card of so-and-so, and you've got the date there and the month. And once you do that, all this comes into your, into your mind. And so when the medium does give a reading, uh, and they and they say, well, look, he, he's given me the the number thirteen, and I think it's around the March period. Um, yeah, you've already kind of got that information in there because you can say, ah, yeah, I did see somebody's, you know, um, memorial, of, yeah, of March, and you know, it's no longer um, a mystery. You you know, it's there somewhere that you yeah, you, you know this person, and that really does help 
with the reading a, a yeah. hell of a but lot. So the I will I will go there, Mike. The problem with most people that do go for readings though, they have a pre assumption yeah. or a pre expectation yeah. of who they want to come yeah. through. Yeah. So that's one of the first warnings that I always say to people, you know, especially if they say, oh, can you connect with someone today? Yeah. And I'll say, well, it's up to them whether they come through. Yeah. So do not have an expectation. No. And they say, oh, but I really want to connect with my mum. Well, why do you need to connect with your mum is yeah. the question yeah. rather than asking her because yeah. she's not going to say to you, mm. should you stay with your boyfriend? Okay, because it, it uh, does get into a psychological issue when people just specifically want one person to come through. Yeah. And, yeah. and it can be that uh, your mother's friend, friend from 30 years ago who you never knew who comes through is the link to bring your mother through. And, yeah. if, you, and if you know, no, 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 I don't, then you then start risking uh the opportunity of your mother to come through. You, yeah. You know, you so know, on, on just a little bit of a different note, a lot of people contact me and say, when will I get a boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. It is a common yeah. question that I get asked a lot, probably because I'm a female. Mm -hmm. So females come to me and they say, oh, when am I getting a boyfriend? When am I going to get married? So one thing I say to these women, because it's in a lot of cases, I say, I'm not going to tell you who he is or what his name is because if I tell you his name is Ben and he works at this bar, you go to that bar and you meet Ben. Mm. But it could be that Ben is that catalyst yeah. where you meet his best friend yeah. so you're involved with Ben instead of the person who you were meant to be yeah. because Ben is just that connection yeah. where you get to go. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same with mediumship too. You know, they come through with all these weird and wonderful things for me. You know, why bring through a bowl of oranges, you know? Um, <laughs> but there's a meaning there and it's generally the client who understands that relevance or that confirmation, you know. And I sit there thinking, wow, should I tell her that they're holding a bowl of oranges? But yes, of course we have to course, because yeah. we don't see the connection no. or the relevance of that message. Mm. Yeah. 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 Wow. Good so time of the night. A good time to finish. Oh, Linda, I am going to send yes. you my YouTube link of the channeled message yes. for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Because anyone that wants it, please go over to on Facebook, Dr. Dr. Linda Kramer Paranormal. You've got my name on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Linda Kramer, Dr. Linda Kramer Paranormal. Mm -hmm. Go there on YouTube on, on Facebook. You do have to answer some questions so we know that you're not a spammer, a robot, or a stalker. <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> already a member. Unless you're already a member because I've posted in there and, um, yeah, we'll certainly get this out there so then people can start watching Mike's beautiful messages from that he channels from Je um, Joan um, because it's very, very relevant mm. now. Um, you know, we, we like closing the show with a little bit of positivity, a little bit of hope, peace, love to all. Mm -hmm. Please know this week, guys, you know, I do tarot once a week. The week, the cards this week said that there's a lot of good things coming. Um, pick the side of which you would want to be on. Do you want to be the person who is in that lower vibration or do you want to be the person raising your vibration up, mm -hmm. showing your honesty, showing your caring nature, showing your generosity mm -hmm. your appreciation and most of all your love to others because that's what we're about the love and the light of the universe so this week guys really consider what you can do do not take sides do not judge or accuse who's doing what mm -hmm. just allow everybody to do what they're doing because that's how ultimately we find the, peace everyone is playing their role so that's right well what a yeah. perfect way to finish. That's it, guys. And not too late. And we'll see you all <laughs> next week, if not even sooner. Yeah. So That's right. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>